Coming up, Tim tracks down one of nature's most elusive mammals. I've just got to get him out of that net. Des meets some rather noisy tree huggers. <laughs> and Nikki helps get some lovable orphans ready for bed. Are you ready for bed, Wally? Nope. <laughs> Sally Ann is going back to school, learning how to be an elephant carer or mahout at the Elephant Conservation Centre at Lampang, about an hour's drive from Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. When you get on, you will say song 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 song. The first undignified lesson: getting on. Sorry, elephant. It's okay. Poor okay. elephant. Meet Sally Ann's new friend, Gail. <laughs> Mahout training requires dressing in one of these nifty blue outfits and taking part in a three day course. But A grade student Sally Ann is squeezing her education into just 10 hours. Gail is ready to teach her his trunk load of tricks. Get bun. Gail, get bun. Put down your bamboo, mate. Come on. Get bun. Ah, oh, good boy. Oh, well done. Looks like Gail has ended up doing all the hard work, even helping Sally Ann get dressed. Oh, you're a good boy. You're a true gentleman. Thank you. Oh. This very talented young man also has an ear for music. Goodbye. Bravo, Gail. He is a man of many talents. Oh, and paints beautiful pictures. Let's face it, Gail is the whole package. Falling in love with these wise, wonderful animals is inevitable. There are now only about 4,000 Thai elephants still surviving. Captivity may be a heartbreaking option, but at least they're safe. The same can't be said for Sally Ann. Jump! <laughs> OK, maybe run and jump up. Run and jump. OK, Gail, forgive me. Ah, good. Oh, Gail, you're a good elephant. I'm so proud of you. Of course, what goes up apparently must come down. The dismount is the next lesson. Get off. Get off now. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, Gail. Coming. Oh. oh, you're a good boy. That was a bit more graceful, wasn't it? Finally, Gail gets some well-earned TLC. And how about a nice bath? <coughs> Part of the program is piloting your personal elephant into the river to give him a good tub. You can't expect to keep dry. <coughs> Ready for the world's biggest water fight. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting done from both sides. That's not fair. Come on, Gail. Oh, Woo! Good. Well done. Hey. After all that fun, it's time for Gail to take a nap and for Sally Ann to find a new playmate, the youngest member of the family. Sometimes when this baby's bored, she does a few home renovations. In fact, total demolition is her favourite party trick. You want my hat? Will I see it again? Will I see it again, beautiful? You want to put it on? Bye bye hat. Oh. <laughs> Looks like Sally Ann's got a way to go before becoming an expert elephant whisperer. Later in the show, she goes bush with her new buddy. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 
Western Plains Zoo has been incredibly successful with its breeding programs, especially with endangered species like the white rhino. Kevin's been working with these amazing giant animals for 22 years. It's always good to have lots of animals. They, um, back in the early days, they used to bring out two and two, and um, two by two, they wouldn't breed. Having bigger groups of cows and bulls encourages more interaction between the rhinos and gets them excited. They go forward from there. They need the stimulation, otherwise they just lay around all day. Yeah, and a bit bored with nothing. each other. Yeah. For this little fellow, the only immediate plans, besides getting a name, are to grow and grow and keep growing. Zoo boss Will Garton is very proud of Western Plains' record when it comes to breeding endangered species. One of its greatest success stories is the Przewalski horse. That animal was all but extinct in Mongolia and um, through that kind of combined collaborative approach of international breeding we are able to um, introduce those animals back into Mongolia. Even today the populations the program has put back in the wild are thriving. This little cutie is a bongo calf named Rafiki, and he was born last October. They're from the antelope family, but you won't see them bounding across the savannah on wildlife documentaries. They're very shy, normally living deep in the tropical African rainforest. Those ears act as radar to detect predators in a really dense forest. They are able to rotate them even with their heads buried in a bush while feeding. For added protection, Rafiki will also develop a lethal set of horns. <laughs> One group of animals that could hardly be called shy and retiring at Western Plains Zoo are the Siamangs. <laughs> the little one here is called Shani. His name, which means gibbon in Thailand, is fitting, as these guys are the largest members of the gibbon family. Their incredible vocal performances can be heard for kilometres. <laughs> Ironically, they're actually not doing it to attract people. So when there's a large amount of um, people around here, they just see it as an invasion of their territory. Ah, oh, I see. So they're really saying we don't like you. Yeah, they're really telling us to get away. <laughs> <laughs> We're going, oh, how good's that? Yeah. Oh, nice and clapping. <laughs> they can hardly expect us to stay away when their little ones are so adorable. <laughs> Today, Tim is doing some research on one of the world's most fascinating animals, the duck-billed platypus. These guys are monotremes. That means they're egg-laying mammals. Now, that's just crazy. And their physical makeup, they've got a duck bill, webbed feet, a beaver tail, venomous spurs, and an oily waterproof fur. Tim and his team are heading out to collect data on some wild platypus. Looks like they found the perfect spot. I've got a little mate to let go. Little blue tongue lizard picked him up on the road, so we'll let him go here in the bush. He's got no chance on the road, but he's probably got a bit more luck here. Off you go, mate. But first things first, carrying heavy equipment is all part of the job. This is the spot. We've got this beautiful calm hole, water's rushing down over the rapids and then it settles in this pond. In such a plum area, Tim reckons there could be around 10 plats here. Platypus are nocturnal and won't be out until dark, which gives the team just enough time to string the net across the river. Now, the water is freezing up here in the hills, so we'll get the net out. Come on in. The net has weights on the bottom and floats positioned along the top. It'll settle in a large horseshoe shape with plenty of slack, which means the plats swim into it and pop to the surface. Ooh. With night falling fast, it's a race to tie the net and get back to shore. The nets are set and it's all eyes on the river. Is that a bob? Oh, splash. 
like the plot. They're starting to get active. As it gets darker, everything is coming to life. Except for Tim and his team. As plats are very shy, they'll need to keep still and silent. We'll join them later in the show. <laughs> Showbiz Thai style. This is the twice daily floor show at the Elephant Conservation Center. It's what the tourists flock to see. The price of the admission ticket helps fund the rescue of other elephants from abuse and starvation. <laughs> A hundred years ago, this proud national symbol of Thailand was the backbone of transport and lucrative logging. Now, with logging banned and their natural habitat shrinking, elephants are in the unemployment line. Here at the centre, the okay. noble tradition of the lifelong partnership between a mahout and his elephant lives on. Yeah. Oh, wow. Foom was just a teenager when he first saw the baby Gale. They've been together for eight years now and are best mates. Nah. Foon couldn't believe it when he was made Gail's mahout. He's put everything into training his beloved elephant. <whistles> this relationship is a full-time commitment. Every morning at dawn, Foon goes to the forest where Gail has spent the night. Together, these soulmates will slowly wander back to the center, where Gail will showcase his many talents. <laughs> Gail is family. Foon treats him just like a child. When the work is finished, it's time to play in the river, share a few stories, and squirt a few friends. About three o'clock in the afternoon, Foom and Gale will slowly wend their way back into the heart of the forest under the cool green canopy. Oh, this is magic. Good boy, Gale. It seems when it comes to choosing a place to sleep the night, Gale likes to get off the beaten track. I think we're going off-road. It's a simple life with few financial rewards. But there is a real sense of dignity about this special relationship. It may be one of the last hopes for the future of the Thai elephant. Come on, have a walk. Hello, little boy. Come on. Come on. She may not have wings, but Gabby Megan is a real angel when it comes to the care of animals. They know this is home and they know they're safe here. Gabby's partner Rick is equally devoted. The pair spend every waking minute looking after injured and orphaned animals at their Mansfield Wildlife Shelter. With around 50 furry and feathered patients to care for, it's astonishing how they find the energy. This is the treatment room in the nursery. Wow. Oh, look at this little one. Who's this? This is Monique. Oh. Poor little Monique was severely burned and had ulcers on her eyes, but is now recovering nicely. Oh, she's beautiful. Quite soft too. These wide-eyed little guys are victims of the devastating summer bushfires. Months later, it's been a slow and painful journey back to health. Pop your head out. We want to see you. Cute is that? Gabby clearly forms a strong bond with all of her little patients. And she's perfected a bedtime routine that works a treat. <laughs> a little tumble. Are you ready for bed, Wally? No. <laughs> I don't want to get my nice mum. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. <laughs> and they just sort themselves out. They do. Oh. They just get themselves quite comfortable. Meanwhile, Nikki has fallen for the charms of this little fellow. Nigel is a baby wombat with a remarkable will to live. 
He was found clinging to his mother's body, days after she'd been hit by a truck and killed. Although the truck driver did stop, he failed to look in the mother's pouch. The foxes had been around they at the had. mother, but he was just burrowing further and further inside. He was, he was. Amazing survivor, he... aren't you, Nige? In the aviary, dozens of birds are also on the mend. Left to fend for themselves in the wild, most of these would perish. Is that yep. a tawny? Yep. yep, that's a tawny. I wish they don't take <laughs> your fingers off. <laughs> Come on, honey. Oh. How's it? Oh, I can't reach. Yeah, can't reach? <laughs> Ow, it got me. Fuck <laughs> 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 What about this little one? Oh. This little guy was blind when he was found. He's lucky to be alive and will spend the rest of his days living in comfort at the sanctuary. You're lucky to be alive. When the animals recover, it's not a simple case of letting them go. After so much human contact, they actually need to relearn some of the basics. So there's a lot to it. It's not just kind of caring for them, it's retraining them to eat their native food. Yes, to teach them how to be wild again, basically. Mm. What extraordinary people and what amazing dedication. And they do it all with no funding and only occasional help from volunteers. Of course, some animals will never leave the shelter. They're now cherished members of a new family where healing hands and hearts of gold are all in a day's work. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, you could get people in, they'd pay for that. They would. <laughs> He's beautiful. Tim has ventured out to track down some of Australia's most intriguing and elusive mammals. Gathering statistics on wild platypus will help him and his team with the captive plats back at the reptile park. It's now two hours into their cold, dark riverside vigil. That's a bob. Finally, a platypus. They had to work fast. I've just got to get him out of that net. Got him. All right, get him off. Keep watching that net, guys. Cutting the net is the quickest way to get them out. Ooh. Big boy. Oh. He's a monster. The net is a massive male. Let's get him up. Oh, fingers are sore. He's got to weigh a kilo and a half. Tim is doing his best not to get hit by the Platt's venomous spurs. This little guy needs calming down, and the best way to do that is to cover him. That's good. A good spot. Recording his vital statistics is the next step. First up, we'll get a quick weight. Look at that, two kilos. We're used to an average of, you know, 1.2, 1.3, but these wild males, they're just massive. Fat is stored in the tail, and that's the key to determining a platypus's condition. Fat tails don't bend easily. Now for a closer look at those venomous spurs. The venom gland is up in the male's thigh. It travels down the leg. And bang, pops out the spur. I'll just get a quick measurement on the bill. If you need to pull him back, just do so, mate. That's five centimetres exactly. 50 mil. We've got an overall length of 50 centimetres. That's just huge, and it's time for this fella to go home anyway. We've got what we needed, so we'll let him go. We've got another plate. Jesus. Uh, it's driving. not quite home time yet. Have I got a glove? Yep. Yeah. Where is he? I don't know. Get the bottom up. Gone. That one's out. The plat has escaped, but there's no time for a breather. There's another one trapped. Cut him out. Or is it a girl? Not big spurs. This one looks bigger than the first. He's about to slip. I can't take him. Yeah, I'm flipping. I'm flipping. Yep, got him. Big boys. That's three males in this, just in this pond, so it's a really productive spot. Okay, one, two, three. 
You still got to watch the spurs because they're big enough just to punch right through that bag. After this one has been weighed and measured, they can both be released. It's been a great night's work. Tim's got heaps of information to take back to the park. So it's time to go. But this is the best part, letting these beautiful creatures go back to their river. There he is. It's back under. He just surfaced and went back down. One to go. Off you go, mate. Just awesome, are they? We'll meet more awesome creatures next time on Danger Wild Animals.